Let's take a quick look at the live-action Death Note adaptation from Netflix. The plot follows a high school student named Light, who while dealing with bullies and the recent death of his mother, stumbles upon the Death Note, a book that when someone's name and cause of death is etched upon it, the writing becomes reality. He's encouraged by a demon named Ryuk to use the note, which comes with many rules and warnings. But it wouldn't be a very interesting film if he decided not to use the Death Note, so he immediately begins using the book to right his perceived wrongs and pick up a chick named Mia. After gaining a following as an entity named Kira by killing hundreds of criminals in Japan, Light and Mia find themselves being tracked to America by a Japanese detective using the alias L. And of course the menacing Ryuk has a few plays of his own to make. This film follows some of the broader strokes of the anime's plot, but the pacing is all over the place. The first half of the film crashes through several major plot points at breakneck speed. We aren't really given a chance to sympathize with the characters or their motivations for using the note. Actually, instead of having any morality struggles with using the note, Light and Mia opt instead to incorporate it into their makeout sessions, which is more than a little fucked up. The second half really slows down with a bunch of side distractions that don't have any real relevance to the plot at large, like a subplot about attempting to get Elle's name, or an extended chase sequence through the city eating up the runtime. I really think I could have liked this a lot more if we spent that wasted time developing the characters earlier in the film. Visually and sound-wise, it attempts to emulate a dark style similar to Donnie Darko, like really tries to emulate its feel, complete with slow motion sequences set to licensed Stady's music. That seems like a great idea on paper, but the cinematography is kinda bland. It's like the Ryuk character looks okay and all, and William Defoe's voice is spot on, but they really don't make use of the character very well visually. For example, one of the early conversations between Light and Ryuk, who's a goddamn god of death, is just a shot reverse shot. You'd think the god of death would be a little bit more imposing, he's literally just sitting there on a bed chilling, hogging all the apples. Also, back to the 80s music thing, I never really associated the look and feel of Death Note with songs like The Power of Love by Air Supply or Take My Breath Away by Berlin. It only fits in the sense of trying to be like Donnie Darko, which isn't a bad idea, but it just kinda comes off as a dollar store version of a movie that cost a fraction of the budget. All that being said, it deviates heavily from the original manga and anime, it does deliver a watchable thriller that at least remains true to the spirit of the series in some ways. It's a little better than the Dragon Ball live-action adaptation we got back in 2009, but not as good as the more recent Ghost in the Shell adaptation, which I also had mixed feelings about. So as far as North American adaptations of anime, we still have a long way to go, and this really isn't breaking any ground. Either way, it's on Netflix, so odds are you'll end up checking it out anyway, but those are my thoughts on the 2017 Death Note. What are yours? Let me know your thoughts. I'd also suggest checking out Donnie Darko. I'll link a review of it somewhere around here. Once again, this was Fade Dragon Tear. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.